30 Principles of the Wise Part 2 Proverbs 22, 17, 18 tells us, Listen carefully and open your heart. Drink the wise revelation that I impart. You'll become winsome and wise when you treasure the beauty of my words and always be prepared to share them at the appropriate time. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stated, We are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the will itself. 30 Principles of the Wise, Part 2. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lions Roar 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us, A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? My name is George Magalhães and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today we're going to continue on our teaching, 30 Principles of the wise 30 principles of the wise we covered last week the first principle and this week we're going to be covering the second one but before we do that let's go back to our main verse and our main verse which is so vital we must keep that in our minds as we learn as we study the word of god is proverbs 22 17 to 18. now i'm reading from the new living translation listen to the words of the wise Apply your heart to my instruction, for it is good to keep these sayings in your heart and always ready on your lips. And always ready on your lips. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you ready? All right. So, as I stated, last week we touched on the first wise principle. I'm going to read the actual uh, whole verses. Uh, I won't touch any more on it. If you haven't already heard it or seen it, go back. It's on there. It's on YouTube. It's on Rumble. It's on Audio Mac. It's also on Daily Motion and all of those. So you can get them there. It's free resources. So you can go there and and um, have a listen to it and study. But just a quick context, just so we have this in the back of our minds, so that we can continue um, from where we left off last week. The first wise principle was from Proverbs 22, 17 to 18. Proverbs 22, 17 to 18. And I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. Listen carefully and open your heart. Drink the wise revelation that I impart. You'll become winsome and wise when you treasure the beauty of my words. And always be prepared to share them at the appropriate time. For I'm releasing these words to you this day. Yes, even to you, so that your living hope will be found in God alone. For He is the only one who is always true. Pay attention to these excellent sayings of threefold things. For within my words, you will discover true and reliable revelation. They will give you serenity so that you can reveal the truth of the word of the one who sends you. Now, keeping that in mind, we're going to continue on with the second wise principle. And yes, we're going to be touching tonight, today, wherever you may be, uh, to this morning. <laughs> we're going to be touching on the second wise principle. And yes, we're going to be focusing just on that one as well, because there's so much we need to cover. Get ready for revelation. Get ready for wisdom, because that's exactly what the Lord's going to deliver tonight. Are you ready? All right, all right. So the second wise principle, the second wise principle comes from the book of Proverbs 22, verses 22 to 23. Verses 22 to 23. Now I'm going to be reading it now from the Amplified Classic Version, which gives us a more detailed understanding. Rob not the poor, being tempted by their helplessness, Neither oppress the afflicted at the gate where the city court is held. 
For the Lord will plead their cause and deprive of life those who deprive the poor or afflicted. All right. All right. Now, commentator Trap, commentator Trap made a sobering statement. If those that relieve not the poor shall be damned, surely they that rob them shall be double damned. It's not a stretch to say that in the last few years we have rapidly slid into a more superficial, vain, illogical, egotistic, deceptive, destructive world satisfied with the appearance of good and truth rather than real living good and truth. I want to say that statement again because it's so important we keep that in our minds. It's not a stretch to say. It really isn't. That in the last few years, we have rapidly slid into a more superficial, vain, illogical, egotistic, deceptive, destructive world, satisfied with the appearance of good and truth, rather than the real living good and truth. As someone wise said, there's more to doing good than hating evil. There's more to doing good than hating evil. And this statement could not be more appropriate than for such a time as this. After all, as the well-known statement goes, the only thing necessary for evil is to triumph, is for good people to do nothing. The only necessary thing for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Now, the so-called Experts, superstars, politicians, self-absorbed, self-appointed elites, and unfortunately even some Christian leaders are quick to sell themselves, unashamed to push their sinister propaganda, the false sense of good, love, tolerance, and truth. This is nothing more than the superficial the vain, the illogical, the egotistic, the deceptive, the destructive activism. Nothing more than smoke and mirrors. Talk is cheap. But God calls us for so much more meaningful, effective, everlasting fruitfulness, greater works. You now, wait a second, George, you're probably thinking. These are, you know, these are... PhD experts, you're talking about billionaires, trillionaires, official government, uh, organizations, uh, elites. These are powerful, mega rich. I mean, their lives surely speak for themselves. Surely there is much wisdom that we can learn from them, right? Well, in the famous words of Malcolm X, if you're not careful... The newspapers, in this case the mainstream media, will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Does that sound familiar? Here is the point where you and I must make the de definitive decision of where we stand, of whom we follow. Will you keep your feet on the boat and trust the captain or will you walk on water and trust Jesus? We cannot do both. Either you trust the world or you trust the word of God. One is superficial, ever-changing, uncertain. The other is the exclusive, undiluted, everlasting truth. I know where I stand. It says... Pastor Hagee revealed, it is a war of light versus darkness, of Christ versus Antichrist, the Word of God versus secular humanism. There will be a winner and a loser. There is no compromise with the enemy. There is no neutrality in this war. And as Jack Wurtson proclaimed, you can't do the will of God if you don't know the Word of God. Verse 22 in the message version reads this way. Don't walk on the poor just because they're poor. And don't use your position to crush the weak. 
Hmm. Don't walk on the poor just because they're poor. And don't use your position to crush the weak. Now, President Franklin Roosevelt wisely claimed the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. How relevant is that statement for the days we live in? Job 34, Job 34, 17 to 19. Is it possible that an enemy of right should govern? And will you condemn him who is just and mighty? God, who says to a king, you are worthless and vile, or to princes and nobles, you are ungodly and evil? God is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. Job 5, Job 5, 15 to 16. But God saves the fatherless from the sword of their mouth, and the needy from the hand of the mighty. So the poor have hope, and inequity shuts her mouth. Verse 22 in the voice translation reads, Do not cheat poor people just because they are vulnerable, or use shady tactics in court to crush those already suffering. Uh -uh. Again, does that sound familiar? Hmm. Isaiah 58 verse 10. Isaiah 58 verse 10 reads, And if you pour out that which you sustain your own life for the hungry, and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then, your, then shall your light rise in darkness, and your obscurity and gloom become like the noonday. Wow! Let me read that again, because it is so powerful that we understand that. In fact, this verse is so relevant, again, for the times that we are living in. It's time to arise, church. And if you pour out, and that's Isaiah 58 verse 10, and if you pour out that which with which you sustain your own life for the hungry, and satisfy the need of the afflicted. Then shall your light rise in darkness, and your obscurity and gloom become like the noonday. Proverbs 14, verse 21. He who despises his neighbor sins against God, his fellow man, and himself. But happy, blessed, and fortunate is he who is kind and merciful to the poor. You see, in this verse, we see that the poor among us require greater protection and compassion. It does not matter if they're poor because of their moral failings or destructive behaviors. In God's word, it's clear. It is not right to take advantage or rob them in any way or form. The poor here is not only in relation to poor in finances, but in all types of resources and environments. Poor in knowledge, poor in qualifications, poor in possessions, poor in relationships, poor in the spirit. Whatever the case, verse 22 is clear to point out, to command, to warn do not walk on, cheat, rob, take advantage of the poor, or crush the weak in their suffering. Again, if you look at Proverbs 19.17, Proverbs 19.17 reads, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and that which he has given he will repay to him. Proverbs 22 verse 9. Proverbs 22 verse 9, He who has a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. And 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, For you are becoming progressively acquainted with and recognizing more strongly and clearly the grace of of our Lord Jesus Christ, His kindness, His gracious generosity, His undeserved favor and spiritual blessing, in that though He was so very rich, yet for our sakes He became so very poor, in order that by His poverty you might become enriched, abundantly supplied. Wow. 
So if we follow these wise words, if we follow these wise words, we will reap an everlasting fruitful harvest. As Matthew 25, 34 to 36 reveals, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and he gave me food. I was thirsty and he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in. I was naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came to me. Amen. Therefore, church, we, the church, must lead by example. We must lead by example. Pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, denominations, church members, ministries, and so on. Do not judge by the appearance. Do not judge by the appearance. As the saying go, goes, do not judge a book by its cover. Likewise, we must always check our hearts, walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Test the spirits and act according to the Holy Spirit's leading and the confirmation of the living Word. For the Spirit of God will always go hand in hand with the Word of God. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verses 8 to 9. Open your mouth for the dumb, those unable to speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are left desolate and defenseless. Open your ma mouth, judge righteously, and administer justice for the poor and needy. This is a command. As Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 26, 6-9 reminds us, God is just. God is just. He does not sit back and does nothing. Oh, no. According to His Word, Deuteronomy 26, 6-9 reads, And the Egyptians treated us very badly. This is Israeli, our, our brothers and sisters talking. And the Egyptians treated us very badly and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our cruel oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Um, and with great awesome power, and with signs, and with wonders. And he brought us into this place, and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen and amen. Leading us to verse 23. Verse 23 in the Living Bible Translation reads, For the Lord is their defender. If you injure them, he will punish you. Wow, the message version says it this way, because God will come to their defense. The life you took, he'll take from you and give back to them. The life you took, he'll take back from you and give back to them. Again, we must not be naive to think that the Lord is sitting back watching and will do nothing about it. The wicked, the rich elites and wicked whatever you want to call them, they may cheat, they may rob, they may take advantage of the poor and needy or the vulnerable. But these poor and needy, they are not defenseless. They still have a defender. And God himself will plead their case and will punish those who cheat, rob, take advantage of them. Wisdom leads us to treat them honorably as christians as believers as disciples of jesus we must adhere to the word of god as deuteronomy 15 verse 7 warns if there is among you a poor man one of your kinsmen in any of the towns of your land which the lord your god gives you you shall not harden your minds and hearts or close your hands to your poor brother and if any of us feel like we are these people, 
like we are in this category, even if it doesn't mean poor in finance, but poor as being a, a vulnerable person, vulnerable in your workplace, vulnerable in whatever it may be. Luke 6, 20 to 21 reminds us of Jesus' very own words. Then he lifted up his eyes towards his disciples and said, Blessed are you, poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. You see, like his perfect love, his perfect grace, his perfect redemption, his perfect justification, his perfect justice is available for you today. So is his promise of protection, provision, and restitution. Verse 23 in the Amplified Classic says, For the Lord will plead their cause and deprive of life those who deprive the poor or afflicted. If the witness will not, God will. If the police will not, God will. If the lawyers will not, God will. If the judges will not, God will. If your family will not, God will plead their, our cause and plead it completely. Perfect judgment onto victory. And that's a promise you and I can always trust. In the warning words of commentator Jules, Woe to the man against whom Jehovah pleads. They shall be spoiled themselves that spoil others. The same measure they have meted out shall be measured out to them again. God will destroy them that destroy the earth. Even Antichrist and his followers, the oppressors of Christ poor on earth, happy the poor on whose side he is. For their Redeemer is mighty. The Lord of hosts is his name. Amen and amen. Commentator Clark also warned, Woe therefore to them that oppress them, for they will have God, not the poor, to deal with. Wow. So now as we read Proverbs 22, 22 to 23, Proverbs 22, verses 22 to 23, and I'm reading now in the Amplified Classic Version, we read it with our spiritual eyes open, the spirit of wisdom and revelation revealed, and the empowering living Word of God manifest in our daily lives as we yield more to the truth, to the living Word of God. Proverbs 22, 22 to 23, Rob not the poor, being tempted by their helplessness, neither oppress the afflicted at the gate where the city court is held. For the Lord will plead their cause and deprive of life those who deprive the poor or afflicted. Amen and amen. I know it's a shorter word than usual, but there's a lot for us to ponder, for us to think about. Allow me to conclude as we began with God's Word, with the main verse today. Proverbs 22, 17-18, tells us what we must do with these 30 principles of the wise. Listen carefully and open your heart. Drink the wise revelation that I impart. You'll become winsome and wise when you treasure the beauty of my words, and always be prepared to share them at the appropriate time. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer so wisely stated, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. Hallelujah and Amen. Now I want to ask you, you may be new here, you may be watching this for the first time. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. What is that, George? Okay, let's get on to it. Romans 10, 9 to 10 tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Basically, if you've been living your life without Jesus, without God, then you are in sin. That is the sim most simple definition of sin. That is the most simple definition. No, not so much definition, but revelation of why you feel that emptiness, that, that something is missing in your life. And you may have tried a thousand and million different things, but you just keep coming back. Why? Because God wants you. Jesus has got you and the Holy Spirit is for you. What does that mean, George? God is relentlessly, passionately, zealously after you and He will never stop going after you because He created you in His image. You are the only creation out of all the creations that was created in God's very own image. You don't, we don't look like Him, like twins, but in the Spirit we are the same kind because He's created us in His image. And He loves us so much that He will never stop seeking you, wanting you back, because you were created for His family, for His kingdom. You are His most prized possession. And He wants you back, basically. And, and, and what, what do I need to do, George? Well, I just said Romans 10, 9 to 10 tells us, simply speak out aloud. You speak out aloud. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. You speak out aloud. You make a decision today. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Make me a new creation. Come into my life. Use me for your glory. It's a prayer like that. That's all you need to do. And mean it. And say it with your mouth. And make the choice like it says there. On the screen, make the choice to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Why? Because we, we were the ones that were supposed to go on that cross. We are the ones who are supposed to pay for our sins. But Jesus took our place. And His finished work, His death on that cross, the blood that He, that he shed, the body that was broken, the death that He received, and then three days later, He rose from the dead. He came back to life, gave us victory, gave Him victory over the curse of sin and death, and as such gave us victory. Now we are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. The same inheritance that He has, we have it if we put our faith in Him and His finished work. In a second, in a few seconds, we're going to pray together. I'm going to have the privilege of leading you through that prayer. It's not a generic prayer. It's a, you just heard what I said. But it doesn't end there. We're also going to ask the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God, to come inside of us, to come and live inside of us, as Titus 3, 5 reveals. Then He saved us. In other words, you give your life to Jesus. You ask Him to, to save you. Not because we were good enough to be saved, but because of His kindness, His pity, His love, His mercy, His grace. By washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God will come and live inside of us. You will become His church, His synagogue, His temple, His very dwelling place. And you will come with fire, which represents power, which represents authority. He will come with gifts, spiritual giftings, and He will comfort you. He will teach you. He will correct you. He will love you. He will use you mightily. Because you you will become, you become the light of the world and the soul of the earth. That's what you were created for. Are you ready? We're going to do this together. Lord, I thank you for this privilege. And as your word says, that if we declare with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we are saved. As I pray now with my sister, with my brother, I thank you that you listen to our to the cries of our hearts. Now you can repeat, repeat after me. Jesus, from this day forward, I make you my Lord and Savior. Wash away all my sins. Make me a new creation. And thank you that God raised you from the dead. And now... I have eternal life. 
Use my life for your glory. In Jesus' name. And Lord, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with your presence, with your fire. Baptize us with you, with your presence. In Jesus' name. Lord, as you did with your apostles, with your disciples, I breathe the breath of life over my brother, over my sister, who is listening, who is watching right now. In Jesus' mighty name, receive the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome back to the kingdom family. It's as simple as that. Some of you may be feeling some weird sensation. You may be feeling like electricity running through your body. Some of you are feeling a real heat. Some of, some of you have felt like a massive weight just lifted off your shoulders. Maybe some of you just got healed. And some of you are feeling like you want to speak with the Gibberish is just coming out. You're like, what are you talking to? What is that gibberish? It is the holy languages of God. It is speaking in tongues. We call it speaking in tongues. It's a spiritual language that strengthens your body, spirit, and soul. And draws you closer to God. It's a spiritual language that is powerful that we need. It's one of the weapons against the forces of darkness. So I encourage you, open your mouth. Let it out. You're not speaking gibberish. The Lord himself is giving you that unction. That means that, that willingness to do that. Glory to God. It is my privilege. I encourage you, please, 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 please. Send us a message. Let us know that you just gave your life to Jesus wherever you are around the world. It's always encouraging for every single one of us to know that another brother, another sister has just returned to the kingdom of God. And if you need any help, whether it's uh, finding a church or anything like that, we can always give you a hand as well. You can send us a message. Our uh, emails are all there. Uh, and you can contact us at any time. We'll respond as soon as possible. Also, I encourage you to get connected with a church. Please get connected with a church. We are not a church, but get connected with a church. Remember, the people are the church. So you won't find a perfect church, but it's a fellowship. It's a group that you must connect with because it's the family of God. And it will provide a safe place for you to learn, to grow in the Word of God, to grow in, in what God's called you for in your life to be able to serve and be served we must be part of a church some of you may have the privilege of being part of a church in person others unfortunately for whatever reason may just do it online but whatever you do get connected with the bible teaching holy spirit filled church amen amen glory to god all right Usually this brings us to our second part of the program, which is called The Collective. But bef just before we go on to that, I need to make an official statement for our ministry. I need to make an official statement for our ministry. So, all right. The following statement is not... I want to make this clear, is not a reaction to recent slandering or vilification. After all, this is nothing new to us or surprising in any way. As an apostle myself, it is my heart, part of my mission, to bring unity into the body of Christ, regardless of any theological or petty differences. For those who know me well, I have learned from my, my lessons over the years, and so I usually wouldn't even bother to address or waste my time responding to any false claims, assumptions, or any other forms of slandering and vilification. But the, but the situation right now calls for it. And for the sake, for the sake of our dear partners, listeners, fellow believers and friends, I would like to make one thing as clear as possible. God's word declares in Psalms 105 verse 15, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That is the approach we usually take. God has our back. But there are moments in life where God requires us to play a more active role 
in executing God's perfect justice. This is especially delicate when dealing with Christian leaders, especially those who are unrepentant, narcissistic, false religious spirits, pharisaic bullies, wolves in sheep's clothing who take more pleasure in tearing down rather than building up, more concerned on building their own kingdom rather than God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians 5, 12 to 13 challenges us. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you agree to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil from among you. As 1 John 4, 1 warns us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see where they are from God. Whether, sorry, they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Matthew 24, 24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and they will show great signs and wonders so as to deceive and lead astray if possible, even the elect, God's chosen ones. It is our heart's desire, our genuine hope, that this statement will not only inform, awaken any innocent believing victims, but also that the perpetrator would realize their error, repent and turn from their wicked ways. Now, from the very beginning, we have always made it clear that Lion's Raw 3-8 Ministries is an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. We are not a church or in competition with any church, denomination or ministry leaders. We are not a threat, but an ally here to help, to work beside, with the church in helping people live out the God-given calling. And in terms of accountability, which other religious people may call it, covering head, spiritual parent, whatever you want to call it, let me make something absolutely clear. Lion's Raw 3.8 Ministries is not a Lone Ranger type of ministry. We do have God-appointed leaders that we hold ourselves accountable to, and vice versa, and we value their input very highly. So stop assuming. Stop deceiving people. Nevertheless, we hold to the firm biblical belief that we are the body of Christ, and the ultimate head is Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 For we preach, for what we preach, is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves merely as your servants, slaves for Jesus' sake. Ephesians 1, 22-23 And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Therefore, like the Apostle Paul in Galatians 1, verse 1, I, George, am an apostle, special messenger, appointed and commissioned and sent out, not from anybody of men, nor by or through any man, but by and through Jesus Christ the Messiah and God the Father who raised him from among the dead. Amen and Amen. Thank you. This brings us to the collective.